Welcome. This is Melinda Barlow, CZT Certified Sentangle Teacher. And today's lesson is OB, and it's by Helen Williams. And um, I, I did a little twist on this one. Of course, you know I'm going to do a little twist on it. Um, but I did, the first time I filmed it was, if you want to look back, is Lesson 109. And um, it's O-L-B. And Helen did a, you know, a, a grid pattern. And I just kind of changed it a little and did a freehand or organic pattern. So that's what's on bold. And um, you can see here I colored it with um, some chalk, uh, general pastel chalk pencils. And um, I will put a link in the description below. It's a paid link. Uh, I am a Amazon affiliate, so I get a little commission off of this. It doesn't cost you any more if you use my link, but this is a, a little, um, just the chalk, and it is so much fun. And you can get a whole, um, this is the 12-pack that um, that you can get, and it's got a little sharpener in it. And I'm just going to, oh, it's got a, I hadn't opened this. It's got a little, um, what do we call that? A little drawing guide, how to draw the tree from general. But anyway, the chalk pencils are so much fun use because they'll blend with the um, graphite wonderfully and I first I have used these before but not the color ones and and I I'm they're just fun so today we're going to do old freehand and I'm gonna do it right in in my book so I'm gonna pick up an 01 pencil I mean 01 um, micron 01 pen and I'm going to use also either an O5 or a graphite. I'm not really sure which one I will will use. But we're just going to draw um, this little, and I think I'm going to just put it right here. And I'm just going to draw a line. And it's going to come kind of down into my bowl. Let me come in a little closer. My camera feels a little wobbly today. So there's my first line, and old is done. By making that kind of a wavy line. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to do um, a little holly ball underneath my words. And now I'm going to turn it, and I am going to do... Um, I'm going to just do six in here. So we're going to do another line. You see me almost make a little mistake there. And let's put another line in here. And we have to kind of do a little um, holly ball effect. So there we have it. I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to just take a tile and do it on a tile so you can kind of see. So we'll start out with a line. And then we're going to do just this kind of wavy. Mine and it has a little point at both ends Then I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to put another line going down and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come in and meet in that center. 
and then go out. Now I'm going to do another one. And this one's going to be a little bit harder because it's going to be like underneath. And we could put one more here. And we could say they're just kind of going underneath. So it has a, a kind of a, it's an organic look. And now I'm going to switch back to my book. And we're just going to aura. And I'm just going to do auras in each one of these spaces. Rotate. So I kind of draw a line and then it meets kind of back in the center. I love how when you use um, aura in, you can, and how it kind of fills up that ink in that, if I go from point point I kind of get a buildup of ink in those corners or those end pieces for me sometimes it's kind of hard to stop and go under you know I sometimes I'll draw a little bit on that line and I I don't like that, but and now we have it all aurad. And now we're going to come back, and I'm going to start on the outside edge. I'm going to switch out to a my a graphic pen. It's got a broader tip, but it's the same ink. It'll just fill it up faster. You can use an 05 or your 01 if you want. You can leave a little bit of um, sparkle. And now this last outside one, I'm just going to make bold because I want it to be bolder on the outside edge. So that's why I go from from left to right. And, and another thing is I don't want to put my hand. This ink takes just a little. There's so much going down that it takes a little longer for it to dry. And this one I had enough. I didn't have to do the bolder edge. I mean, you can see how just relaxing it is to fill in. It is for me. I love the fill in work. I'm going to come in and fill that in there. I made a little, not a mistake because there's no mistake in Zentangle, but it, and you just fill in. Okay, now this one again needs me to make this bold there. I don't like to leave it not bold on the very outside edges. I like it to have that bold look. And sometimes I will put a sparkle in and sometimes I don't. I'm going to put one down here at the under at the bottom.
and bow that one up on the outside. And there we have another old flower. Now, I, on this one, I just did some freehand ones coming off kind of like leaves. And so that's what I'm going to show you what I did here. I'm just going to, you can make a line. And we can start up here. And we can do the bulbs. And then we can come back and just put some along the outside edge. I'm just going to put another one here. Draw that line up the center, then aura out, and come back into the center. And there we have a little line of you know, looking like leaves. And we can stripe these also. So that they are want to take your time not to rush and I was just rushing right there and I kind of have a little not so good of an of a aura but when I come in and and add my black I will take care of any of those little mistakes or lines I don't like because we always say there's no mistake in Zentangle so now I'm going to come back and this time I'm just going to use my O1. And I always start on the furthest most, oh sorry, it wasn't even a um, part of my um, leaf so that I don't have to put my hand in any of the ink. So I put it on the further you know, most part, and then work my way um, away from where I'm striping. And I do that on any striping. I always want to work away from where I'm striping. Always remember to have a light touch. You don't want to push hard. That ink just flows out of that pen really easy without pushing hard. And you can see I did a little line of sparkle all along there just leaving myself a little bit of light. And I really probably should have done this one first so that I didn't have to put my hand in the ink. So you can see how I'm just filling those in. I might want to put another aura right there and I'm going to work 
from the outside in that one's kind of different so I'm just going to fatten up that line right there maybe I'll even put another line up there and I'll do this one And you can see here I need to fatten up that outside line and it might have been better off if I would have just taken a thicker pen but I'm just going to go over it several times with my O1. My last one and there we have the orb. Now we're going to put in um, some fescue Muka, and they're Maria's. It's Maria's design, and I really like it because I've got fescue here, and that was printed in your book. So I'm just going to show you. You can just come around the outside of that, and you've got a little. Let thicken up that little point, and you've got a little muka out of fescue. So let's just draw one from scratch. So I'm just going to come up and do a little fescue and then I'm just going to come on the inside curve go around and come down. So if I had another fescue and this one's going to go under little holly bar effect go around stop. That might be a little easier method of making mooka if you have a hard time with mooka. And you could go in and fill in any of these mookas on the bold page, um, I mean fescue, and make them a mooka. It might be a little hard to do one that is already there because the line but maybe not it kind of you can still see it I'm just going to draw one that comes down I'm absolutely love um, Muka, and so this little fescue muka is just another way that I can have my fescue and my muka too. And there we have it. Now we're just going to show you a little bit about coloring it with these um, general chalk pencils. And I have a a green and a and a a violet that I'm going to use. And, and it comes with a a great sharpener that is just meant for that chalk pencil. That chalk pencil is a little bit different to sharpen because it's so soft. And so I'm just going to come in here and I am going to just, I'm going to color the bold. So I'm just going to put a little chalk at these. You know, 
and here on the B just like you would if you were going to shade the under parts of the B is that where it, where it kind of goes under and now I'm going to take a, a shading stump and I'm going to blend the chalk and it blends just beautifully and I can get some dark areas and some light it just has a beautiful way of blending I have been using um, odorless paint thinner to blend my colored pencils but this is just another way of blending and the fun thing about this one is I'm going to come in and I'm going to do um, I could add another color to my purple but I'm just going to add a my green And then I'm going to use it, um, a different shading stump. This is one I've used for green. You can use the same one and get a nice blend. Maria does that. You want to kind of lay it on its side so you get the best use of your shading stumps. And you can clean them off with a emery board. But you can come in here and do um, a, you know, color them. And then you can come back in. And I like to just, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to do just instead of just little, I'm just going to come in and put. And I, I'm just doing little circles, but some of them have, I just don't fill them in all the way. They might have a little light to them. We're just going to call this an, a way of auraing your, your work. So I can go in and just put those all let me come in so you can see all the way around your um, the bold just to give it some more emphasis and you can come back in and take your graphite I've just taken a little graphite pencil I'm going to come back with my same purple shading stump and I'm just going to add a little bit of graphite and add just a little different, just a little bit more. It is so fun. And let's take um, a little graphite and put on on my old, I mean not graphite, but color, just the chalk. And I'm just going to color right over those that little spot that I use that was there as a um, sparkle. And then I'm going to blend it with my shading stump then I'm going to take my graphite and I really didn't want to put it on my black it has a tendency to not look all that good on black it, it. but I got it on the black 
So I'm going to take my um, green pencil and I'm going to just erase that off of there a little bit so it doesn't, it's not going to erase off. We're just going to have to put a little green over the top of it. I didn't like that, how that, but there you see how you can color. I'm going to bring back in my um, original. I put a little pink with the lavender in here and um, but you could use any color you want. And this one was printed. This is um, printed and when you print them they're, they're a little bit larger than they are in the book. You can print them larger so you can see that the difference but bold. It's just a fun template and the saying here is the doors will open to those who are bold enough to knock. Sometimes we just have to be a little bold and um, see what happens in our life. But this was a fun template to do. And I will put a link in the description below um, that for the um, general um, pencils. And um, know that it is an affiliate link. I do get a little commission off of it if you choose to use the link, but it was fun. This was a fun um, template to do, and I love Helen Williams um, when she does when she was doing um, in a little lime. She always had some fun things to do, and this this is a bold statement. These obes, so enjoy and. Thanks for watching and have a great day.